Hi everybody. Um, it's the time of year when normally I get to see all the infants and they come up and do their play up at St Michael's Church and I'm really missing you and I'm really really sorry that I'm not going to see you this year. I thought I'd send you a special Christmas assembly. Now I know what you're thinking. Infants and juniors alike, you're going to be thinking, oh Reverend Tiff's going to tell us the same old story about the birth of Jesus. Well, of course that is the most important and the best story ever told and that is the basis of the Christian faith how God was born to be one of us how God chose to come and live the life of an ordinary poor person and show us what it's like to be in friendship with God but I know your teachers are doing a great job of helping you remember the Christmas story so actually I'm going to bring you a little bit of a different story today I'm going to tell you about somebody who about three four hundred years after Jesus chose to follow him and live his life in um, uh, after Jesus. And I think you might quite like this story. So this story is about a man called Nicholas. And Nicholas uh, lived and grew up in the country called Turkey. And he was there around the third, fourth century. And he became a follower of Jesus Christ. And at that time, there was a really, really nasty Roman emperor and the Roman emperor was called Diocletian and he was very cruel and very mean and he put in prison all the people who were followers of Jesus and Nicholas because he was a leader of the Christians he went to prison and he was isolated and he wasn't allowed visitors and he was treated horribly and he had a terrible 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 time in prison under Diocletian and a few years passed and Diocletian died and stopped being the emperor and a new emperor took over Rome and the new emperor's name was Constantine. Now Constantine was completely different from Diocletian because he had had a vision of God and um, God had said to him, I want you to follow Jesus. So Constantine himself became a Christian and he went round and he let all the Christians who had been in prison out of prison and this includes our friend Nicholas. So Nicholas got let out of prison and he'd had such a horrible time. He'd been beaten up and ha had an awful time in prison, but he came out and he went back to Turkey, to his town and started um, serving the people in Turkey, just like he'd been doing before he went to prison. Now, sometimes when people have a horrible, horrible, horrible time, it can make them feel very frightened and it can really close them up and make them a bit grumpy and a bit mean. And we do see that happen with people. But some people, when they have a horrible time, they're different. They become more kind, more generous. And Nicholas was like that. He became so kind and so generous that his reputation for being kind and generous spread all around Turkey. And there was one particular story that was told about Nicholas, which made him really, really famous. So in his town, there was a woman whose husband had died. And so she was left on her own with three daughters. Now in those days, there wasn't a national health service and there wasn't free school meals and all the things that help us if we're finding things really, really difficult weren't there. And so this woman was left with only one option. She had made the decision that the only way she could hope to keep her children, her daughters alive and to keep herself alive was she was gonna sell them to become slaves. And she just hoped that the people who bought her would be kind and would give her a meal. And even though they'd probably have to work really hard and not have a great time, she just hoped that it would keep them alive. And Nicholas heard about this woman's terrible situation and the terrible future that lay in store for her three daughters. And he thought for a sec and he made a decision. He got three sacks and he went to his, I don't know, piggy bank or whatever and he found all the gold that he had. Now, I don't have gold but all the, all the gold that he had was heavier than this and he put the gold that he had, he divided it between the three sacks just like that and then in the night when nobody was watching he put the sacks over his shoulder and he went over 
to the window of the widow's house. And while everyone was asleep, in the middle of the night, Nicholas, known to us now as Saint Nicholas, put the sacks of gold through the widow's window. And quietly as he arrived, he left. Now the next morning, of course, the widow and her daughters woke up to discover these three sacks of gold in their house. And it changed everything. It meant that the widow didn't have to sell her children. It meant that the children could stay with their mum. It meant that there was a future and there was hope for people. Now, somehow someone must have found out about what St. Nicholas had done because the stories about him spread all around the world. And he became a special, what we call a saint, patron saint, for several things, children, Christmas, and generosity. He was considered one of the most generous men there had been and that his particular love and care for children became famous. Now I know, and we all know, we don't need to say it really, that 2020 has been a really difficult year. Lots of things haven't happened that we wish could have happened and lots of things have happened that we wish didn't happen. And it may be that we've come to this, the end of this year feeling like our hard hearts are a little bit harder. We're a little bit more disappointed and sad than we were at the beginning of the year. Well, that's understandable. But I just want to remind you about St. Nicholas. He had spent all that time alone in a prison cell. He had spent all that time being beaten up and being very, very sad in his prison cell. And when his chance came to come out again, to go back to normal life, he chose not to be hard-hearted and not to be tough, but to be generous and to be kind. And that's how we remember him. Now, it may be that you feel a little bit like one of those girls. You just don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. And it might be really scary for you right now. Maybe that you feel a little bit like the mum in the family, that you're not quite sure how you're gonna get through tomorrow and that you need someone to put something special through your window to help you out. Or it may be that you want to think of yourself a little bit like St. Nicholas, that you have had a tough time, but you want to choose to be generous and kind. Now, whichever situation that you're in, I want you to know that this Christmas, you are loved. You are totally and utterly loved. God thinks you're amazing. I think you're amazing. Your teachers and your parents all think you are amazing. You are special beyond measure. And we want you to have a very, very happy Christmas, whatever that looks like this year. And if you can do something for someone else, if you can let your heart be a little bit soft and be a little bit generous, I know that it will make you very happy. So I'm gonna wish you a very happy Christmas and I'm going to do it by praying. And if you'd like to pray, please would you close your eyes or bow your head and join in with me. But if you don't want to pray, that's absolutely fine. Perhaps just keep quiet for a moment and think about that story. Think about how you feel today, hearing that story of St. Nicholas. Do you feel like someone who's in need of something put through their window that you could really do with a boost right now? Or do you feel like somebody who's got a soft heart and you can be the person to be helping someone else out? Either way, God thinks you are amazing. So let's pray. Loving God, I thank you for every child, every teacher, every support worker, every administrator, every parent, every governor who's part of the Honeywell School community. Thank you that you've got us through this term. And I pray that for every person, there would be a sense of joy this Christmas. Whoever we're missing, whoever we wish we could see or hug, we pray that you will meet us in that sense of sadness and help us to find some joy in the days ahead. We pray that you help with the vaccine so that soon we can go back to normal life. And we pray that we will choose to be kind when normal life comes back, just like St. Nicholas. Amen. So everyone, a very, very happy Christmas. I hope to see you around on the streets and uh, on Honeywell Road and around the place. And we're actually coming to do carols on every street 
um, in the parish. So that's every street from Shellgate Road right along to Honeywell Road. So I probably will see you in the next few weeks. Um, but if I don't, have a very, very happy Christmas. Bye.